In this video, we're diving into palette textures, a super efficient way to optimize textures and reduce draw calls in 3GS. If you haven't seen my previous video on optimization, I highly recommend watching it first. Optimization isn't just about reducing polygon count. Textures and draw calls also play a huge role in performance. Palette textures help tackle both texture size and draw call at the same time. Here's a 3D scene I made in Blender. If we look closer, we'll see that this entire mesh is using just two tiny textures to control color, roughness, and metalness. And since it's all merged into a single mesh, WebGL only needs one draw call to render it. That's a huge performance boost. However, some objects like this plant are trickier to optimize with palettes since they require more complex materials. Now, let's break it down step by step. The color palette technique is simple. Instead of using large textures, we use a small image with tiny squares for each color. There are two ways to create a color palette. Pre-made palette, you create a large set of color in advance. This gives flexibility but results in a bigger textures. Or optimized palette, you build your scene with multiple material first, then extract only the colors you used into small palette. For this video, I'll stick with the optimized approach. Create a new model. Let's use our little monkey friend and apply different materials. Once happy with the colors, create a small texture in Photoshop, like 64 by 64 pixels. Now draw tiny squares, like 16 by 16 pixels, for each color. Finally, let's go back to Blender, make a copy of our mesh to keep a non-destructive workflow, create a new material for our palette, import the texture we made, open the UV editor, and adjust the UVs to match the color squares. And that's it! You now have a fully optimized color palette. This method saves texture space and allows multiple objects to share the same material, reducing draw calls. Now, let's take it a step further by packing roughness and metalness into a single texture. Before we start, there are a few key concepts to understand. Roughness and metalness values range from 0 to 1. In a texture, white equal 1, maximum effect, and black equals 0, no effect. GLTF and 3GS store roughness in the green channel and metalness in the blue channel. Instead of using separate textures, we'll combine them into one image using Photoshop's channel blending. Finally, while 3GS since version 151 supports multiple UV channels, keeping everything in one UV set is often the most efficient way to optimize performance. If we can reuse the same UVs from our color palette textures, we'll save memory and reduce complexity. So now let's go ahead and create our roughness and metalness palette. Adjust roughness and metalness values in Blender for your model. Recreate the corresponding grayscale squares in Photoshop. 20% roughness equals 20% white, which would be a light gray color, and 80% roughness would be an 80% white, which result in a dark gray color. Use Photoshop channel system to assign the values correctly. Place roughness in the green channel and place metalness in the blue channel. One way to do this is by creating a group and setting the blending mode to affect only the green or blue channel. And don't forget to create a square for all the materials. Import the texture into Blender Use a separate RGB node and connect the channel to your material. Since we reuse the same UV map as the color palette, we avoid creating extra UV sets. You can see that our base model and the one using the palette has slightly different colors. This is because our roughness and metalness texture should be set to non-color. And now all three key material properties, color, roughness, and metalness, are controlled with just two tiny textures. While this method covered the basics, Adding an ambient occlusion map or a light map can further enhance your scene, but that's a topic for another video. And that's it, now you know how to optimize textures with a palette system for 3GS.